Hey folks, Ken Poole here with Engel and Volkers and Barry. Just gonna run you through a little bit of a quick stats update. Now, if you haven't seen the stats quite like this, there's a reason for it. These were all generated by myself over uh, the last several months. Um, not all of them are going to be 100% to the number accurate, but they'll be accurate within, um, you know, less than a percent. So still, still very, very valuable um, in terms of uh, looking at patterns and what's going on in the market. So um, what I've got up here, this data is, is actually showing us um, from the start of February. So you can see week of February 1st and 7th. Now these numbers are um, on Simcoe County, or sorry, across Simcoe County on the Barry board. All right, so on the Barry board, that first week of February, 222 new listings hit the board. Um, and you can see that, you know, we were in the pattern of rocketing upwards here um, up until we peaked um, uh, the second week of March. Now those numbers, the percentages you're seeing there beside the new number of new listings, those are just how much of a percentage increase we were looking at um, that week versus the week before. And then you also are gonna see how many cancellations hit the board each week. Um, and the percentage is as a percentage of how many new listings came on. So just for an easy uh, relationship, say 100 new listings hit the board and 10 were canceled, that means that there was 10% cancellation rate. Now, um, the reason I was tracking this is just to see when things were starting to shift in terms of um, the holding offers date strategy um, starting to fail. And you can start to see the, the cracks were starting to show once we got uh, you know, into mid to late March. And um, it, it's really a better measure though to look at it as a percentage. Uh, and the reason cancellations are an indication of when the offer date is not working anymore is because usually agents, when they list with an offer date, they underlist, uh, hoping to fire way above market value when they get the offer night that comes in. If they don't get what they want, they cancel the listing, repost it the next day for the price that they do want. So usually more cancellations indicates more offer nights not working out. So, you know, if we buzz along here, you're gonna see, you know, going through March, April, May, June, and into July, look at the percentages of cancellations, generally speaking, you know, fluctuating a little bit, but kind of going up over time. Um, the highest percentage-wise that we had hit was um, right around the turn of July, 28%. That's extremely high if you compare back to, say, um, the start of February through to March, you were fluctuating around nine to fourteen percent. Okay, so um, that's a, that's a, a big indication there. That's part of the reason why you're seeing less places having that offer night um, option. Also, uh, the number of new listings was uh, firing upwards until um, we hit this week of May. That's kind of where the, the, it peaked. And, um, you know, it's been kind of coming downwards. You're seeing a lot of red percentages in here, meaning that the number of new listings versus the week before are down. Um, and if we look at uh, up to the end of last week, uh, you'll see the highest number again. We hit a 28%. We were all in the 20 to 28% range here over the last month. Um, as well, the number of new listings has been uh, pretty low. Uh, so, you know, this could just be a seasonal lull. It's not unusual for July and August to see a slower amount of activity as compared to the spring and then to see a bump upwards in activity following Labor Day through till about the snow flies. So um, here, this slide, I'm not gonna take you through all of these in detail, but this is um, number of new listings versus number of solds that week. Um, and I've got uh, percentage of sold versus the number of new listings. Um, what you can see here is, you know, the number of new listings as they were coming up. So generally speaking, were the number of solds. Um, but we started to see in May that the number of solds started coming down each week. Um, and percentage wise, 
versus the number of new listings was dropping as well. So if you're having less places selling that are coming on the market, your inventory is growing, right? So for buyers, it's a good thing. For sellers, it's not as good a thing. So, um, you know, if you look into around the, um, when summertime from schools kicking off, we're looking at the number of solds really dropping down significantly because we hadn't seen them go below 200 since early February when things were on the rise, right? So um, those are indicators there, uh, but this doesn't mean prices were dropping in this time. We're gonna look at prices in a little bit. Um, now, if you look up to last week, look at that was uh, since January, the lowest number of solds in a week we had seen. Uh, 149 and the uh, again I put red here if it was below 70% so about 69% of the new listings were the number of solds um, so first time since January we've gone below 150 um, now there's a lot going on in this table but what I really want to show you um, is the net growth now I started tracking net growth back in mid-January not for any specific reason, I believe it was January 18th. It's just that in January, our um, months of inventory were, were almost nothing. In other words, we, we had almost no inventory and whatever inventory was coming on was getting gobbled up right away. So, you know, from the date I started, you could assume, let's say we had 50 to 75 active listings on the board, really, at any given moment that weren't already sold or conditional. Um, so, you know, net growth is, how many listings are on at the end of that week versus how many we started with. Okay, so if, if 200 listings came on and 100 were sold, that means we gained 100 in inventory, for example. So, you can see the cumulative net growth in inventory as we go on here, right? So, over the span of February, we were up 218, again, since January 18th, just an arbitrary date. Uh, but again, in mid-January, we had almost no inventory. And as you're looking at this, and we move along here, we peaked in uh, that last week of June, okay? So we were up 506 listings versus where we were in mid-January. But then it, the inventory has been dropping again. It's not necessarily that a huge number of sold, but there's been more cancellations, there's been more expires, okay? Um, and if you look at where we are here now, we're back down to 399 up versus where we were on January 18th, right? So we hadn't been at 399 since, you know, around uh, the end of April, early May. Okay, so that's just something to watch. As the inventory tightens up, it puts sellers in, a, in more of the driver's seat, typically. Okay, I'm not going to go through this whole graph right now, but what I will take you through here, this is just uh, net inventory from that January 18th date. Okay, so this is when stuff, you know, we got to the start of February and just the inventory rocketed upwards because everybody saw the uh, rising prices. They all wanted to get their places onto the board. Um, some people were over listing, some people didn't have attractive properties, whatever. So the inventory started to grow and it rocketed upwards. We kind of stabilized a little bit, um, you know, late March through to May, then we gained more inventory. I remember where I said that peak was, and about late, ever since about late June, we've kind of been on a slow downwards um, direction in terms of net inventory. So it could be looking like a strong position for sellers in the fall. We don't know though. We're kind of in uncharted territory right now, um, coming out of COVID. So knowing what to predict here is impossible, but we're seeing indications of possibly a strong fall for sellers. Um, now, you wanna have a look at price. Now, there's a couple things going on in here, so not to get totally confused, but um, sale price versus original list price. Now, as many of you know, original list price didn't necessarily mean anything when a lot of people were doing holding offers because they weren't listing for what they actually wanted, right? There was people listing for $4.99 knowing that the place was going to sell for $6.50. Um, but 
using this measurement tool, we're able to get an indication of the, the fact that the people using that strategy has been significantly dropping as time has gone on. So the, the peak of all of this, um, the climax of that strategy, I guess you could say, was towards the end of February, okay? We, we hit a maximum of 111.3% of uh, original asking price. So in other words, on average, places were selling for uh, over 11% above asking, okay, which is significant. And that's on average. Now, you kind of start to see it leaking downwards here though, right? By the time you get to uh, late June, and these are in two week blocks here, just because I, I needed bigger sample sizes to make these numbers um, actually significant enough. But you can see that, uh, you know, 111, then 109, 108.9, 108.9, 107.5, and you're kind of leaking downwards here, you know, towards mid to late June, we're already down to 105, and you get down to around the start of August, and we're down to 103%. So again, that percentage of the, the sale price versus the original listing price, as it's coming down, that means less people are using the strategy of um, listing for less than they want and the offer is going crazy over the asking price. Why is that significant? Well, if you're a buyer, you might want to be having, uh, you know, looking around right now before things start to take off in the fall again, uh, because they might. I don't know, you know, again, I don't have the crystal ball. This video may not age well, I don't know, but I'm just giving you the information as we have it today. Now, in terms of the sale price stuff, you'll see here, uh, average sale prices from mid to late January through towards the end of March, they were all, it was averaging around 751,000. Again, this is across all of Simcoe County, so this is not uh, micro specific down to Innisfil versus Midland or anything like that. This is just across Simcoe County. But generally speaking, when the, the whole area is kind of heated up or cooled down together for the most part. So across Simcoe County, we were kind of hovering in around this price point for about a month from the end of March through till approximately the end of April, we were hovering around 768 as an average sale price. And then, uh, you know, around the end of April, all the way through to um, the start of July, we're averaging around 800,000, 801. But the next four weeks, heading up to the start of August, the average sale price came down a little bit, which is kind of interesting. So if you're looking at that, um, that can mean a couple different things. I don't think necessarily sale prices have really dropped in that time, but what has happened is that higher end that was still selling like crazy, that people were still gobbling up two and $3 million properties, they've really cooled off a bit. I'm not saying the prices are dropping, I'm just, not, I'm just saying they're not flying off the shelf. So if we're not having a large number of high end homes selling in a span of time, it's gonna pull that average sale price down. Okay, what we've seen in the market is it feels like sale prices have kind of flatlined a bit over the last, I don't know, four to eight weeks, um, but the, the, the prices aren't necessarily dropping, okay? However, that's, that's why you have to be careful when you're looking at average sale price because it doesn't take into account um, if there's more or less of a high-end high properties or more or less low-end properties that have sold during a, a particular span of time. So just looking at that, it is interesting to see there because if you looked at this carefully, I mean, that average is going to be, you know, close to 770, which means, you know, you're, you're down, um, you know, close to 3% if you look at it just by the sale price, average sale price. But, you know, we haven't really necessarily seen prices dropping in the market. Something else buyers are going to find interesting, and actually this is great for sellers' expectations as well, is the uh, percentage of properties that sell going conditional first versus selling firm when they get an offer. 
Uh, every seller is like, oh, I want only a firm offer. That's great if the market supports that. Right now, it doesn't necessarily, okay? Yes, you can get a firm offer, um, but it's not a lock like it was, say, back in January, February, okay? And uh, this, you're gonna see in this table, I'm only picking this up, you know, early April, when it was about 30% of homes that sold were conditional, <clears throat> okay? And you're seeing it kind of fluctuating here between 30 to 45%, uh, but you know, you're seeing more of those 40s as we're, we're getting into the summertime. And if we look at the last few weeks, really, like look from July through to last week, there's a lot that are in around the 50, 53, well, there's 41 and 47, but you know, you're more in around half of them that sell right now go conditional first. Okay, which is significantly different from where it was um, back earlier on this year. All right, I'm not gonna go through that. So anyhow, that's just a quick rundown. We can get into even more specifics. <clears throat> if any of you have interest in these numbers and wanna discuss how it relates to you or a family member that might be looking to buy or sell, please reach out anytime. Uh, I love going into this stuff. Again, these numbers were all generated by me. So uh, if you wanna get a copy of some of the slides, I'd be glad to share them with, uh, with you. So please reach out, love to hear from you. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying this uh, beautiful summer. Take care and talk soon.